Defining the greatest goaltender in the NHL season to season has become a relatively simple exercise since the lockout. Lead the league in save percentage, and the Vesna Trophy is yours. Since the lockout, only two goaltenders have managed to win the Vesna without leading the NHL in save percentage. And in order to overcome this insurmountable hurdle, both goaltenders only needed to register an NHL record 48 wins. Save percentage alone as a measurement system is extremely flawed. Regressing to an assessment based on a team measurement brings us back to the day where the Vesna was automatically awarded to the goaltender with the greatest goals against average. Without context, and viewed in a statistical vacuum, it becomes too easy to award the Vesna. At issue is the lack of focus on environment and how multiple goaltenders are punished for playing behind a team with gaping defensive holes. Without context, Braden Holpe becomes an easy choice for the Vesna when compared to Henrik Lundqvist. Holpe is younger, matched the all-time wins record of Martin Berdur, and registered a higher save percentage in goals against average. How does our perspective change when we add in environmental factors like pre-shot movement? A good environment for a goaltender is one in which the defense allows him to work in straight lines. You allow a goaltender clear sight of the puck and the shooter approaching in a straight line, he is able to gather important information. As Kessel approaches in a straight line, what information can Holpe gain? Depth and angle. Stick location. Foot and hand position. The angle and the position of the stick blade. This information allows a goaltender to input all the data into his decision-making process. The more data, the ability to predict the outcome increases. This extra information allows the brain to make tiny computations which allow them to predict where the puck is and where it is going. The puck is moving too fast, so the brain jumps ahead and fills in the missing information to predict its eventual destination. The problems arise when the information flow is disrupted. It is why a defense denying pre-shot movement is so important to success. On a tip shot, havoc can be caused because the brain has predicted the outcome based on the initial information that was gathered. The prediction is based on outdated information. This disruption causes the goaltender to move to the wrong spot. Rebounds also can disrupt the process because it denies the goaltender the ability for initial setup on the secondary opportunity. Rebounds to the front side have a higher success rate but rebounds to the backside cause as much disruption as the most dangerous opportunities, slot line passes. This type of scenario is a massive disruptor for gathering information. All the visual cues disappear, and the response is to get to the spot that covers the greatest amount of net. This is why shooter success increases so drastically, and goaltender success rates plummet. When we break down these environmental factors, we see why traditional statistics lack the necessary context to judge individuals. If we reassess Holtby and Lundquist under their non-controllable environments, we can see where separation exists. An average environment sees goaltenders face 85% of their shots in straight lines with clear sight. If a goaltender drops below the 85% mark, they begin to be compromised. If it pushes above that mark, then goaltenders begin to gain an environmental advantage. While Holtby shades slightly above average at 86%, Lundquist is in the 82% range. If we average that out over starter's workload of 1,800 shots, Lundqvist is facing 59 more shots with pre-shot movement. When we take into account that each of these clear sight shots averages a 95% success rate, it is a considerable disadvantage. When we add in that Lundqvist had an absurd 964 save percentage on these shots in 2016, we see why he was able to outperform expectations. 27 of those shots are slot line passes, 16 extra tips, and 16 extra rebound opportunities. If we took Lundqvist's success rates on each of these opportunities and gave him an average environment, Lundqvist's save percentage jumps from 920 to 927. This environmental disadvantage removed him from Vesna and MVP consideration. This type of context can alter our perceptions. While Brayton Holtby is still an above average goaltender with a 918 adjusted save percentage, he doesn't consistently manipulate his environment in the same manner that Lundqvist continually does. The elite goaltenders in the NHL continually do this, and while this is a huge advantage for their teams, it also causes team building issues as elite goaltending can mask team deficiencies which can lead to misjudging playoff and cup windows. We need to rid ourselves of our over-reliance on save percentage to assess individual greatness. With advanced data, we can establish a league baseline and view goaltenders with the proper context and understand when and where unexpected success comes from. 
It can also provide goalie coaches with the data to assess and improve a goaltender's weak areas while providing them with the context to understand their successes and struggles. It also can provide coaching staffs with information to forge a defensive structure to take advantage of these strengths and minimize individual weaknesses. Coaches and management also need to gather information for success. Like goaltenders, the wrong data can make their environment more difficult. So good data evaluation is essential and the equivalent to providing clear sight opportunities for them. It is why changing the paradigm is so essential to stay ahead of the competition. If you have any questions, follow me on Twitter at ChrisBoyle33 or you can follow the Shock Quality Project at msg.com or the sqp.net.